You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible The Book of Revelation and the Keek Principle I've talked about the Keek Principle before, though I haven't used that name Keep it in context The Book of Revelation is a great example of how keeping it in context can help us to avoid stupid mistakes Do Alan Hayes in their work on the hermeneutics of the Bible talk of reading such a document as like two towns separated by a river and like two towns separated by a river if as we try to approach the other town we try to jump the river we get into deep water keep it in context the problem with so many Christian readings of scripture is that we want to jump the river we want the Bible we expect the Bible, we demand that the Bible will mean something for us today, now, instantly and we ignore the intentions and meanings back then so with Revelation we ignore the intentions and meanings that John and his readers might have had for the book and we seek predictions about today but a few simple questions about who wrote the book and who they wrote to dispel the mist and make the book remarkably clear and sharp the book was written by John chapter 1 verse 1 now we're not quite sure whether it's the same John as wrote the gospel and all the letters it's true that there are strong similarities of thought pattern and language between all three of those collections but it's also true that there are some differences either way we discover in verse 9 that John was on the island of Patmos and he describes himself as brother and companion in tribulation of the people he's writing to and also talks about being brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ and as we look closer we discover that he's on Patmos because of the word of God and because of the witness of Christ witness there is in Greek marturian that's a clue that we should look closer at all this and as we look closer we very quickly discover that John was in prison not on holiday on the island of Patmos and the closer we look the more clues we find in the book or in our background reading to see that John and his readers were experiencing severe persecution there's discussion about exactly how severe but persecution quite clearly and fairly clearly too death was a possible outcome of their witness their marturia the word we get martyr from if we accept this picture there are lots of items of merely academic interest that follow like the date of the book, who was ruling in Rome and stuff like that but much simpler than that and needing no great specialist knowledge we might take the reading of the book offered by one of the prophecy specialists who point to things that have recently happened that they claim match some prophecy in this book to construct a timeline of the end of time usually with now as an important turning point so ask yourself how would John's readers have welcomed that message it would go something like this okay guys John writes I know you're suffering tribulation and possible persecution but don't worry the world will come to an end in about 20 centuries from now so that's all right isn't it I've been one of the recipients of John's visions and I thought that was his message I'd have sent him to the lions no what John's saying is not some arcane prediction of 21st century politics but rather a double but simple theological conviction Jesus rules and Jesus not Caesar is Lord and one day everyone will see that Jesus is Lord that message was revolutionary and dangerous it sent Christians to their deaths and in the end long after John's time it defeated the might of Imperial Rome the trouble is it's not good news for 21st century Western Christians we don't want Jesus to come and put things right the way they are suits us pretty well most of the time but to Christians in much of the rest of the world oppressed by greedy elites kept in poverty by disease and by war suppressed minorities to such Christians today too John's vision comes as hope and joy water of life but not as a prediction of tomorrow's headlines unless their prayers come true come Lord Jesus come and take up your rule let us see you reign you see a dash of keep it in context kills 99% of all futurology 
and restores revelation as a book for the Christians of the world keep it in context it's so simple and it works <laughs>